It's been a little bit. <laughs> it's been uh, almost a month since we recorded this podcast. Yeah, it has. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah. Took a little break. So... We've been busy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, October was a hell storm, and we've been trying to, you know, get back into the rhythm of things. Um, but if you were keeping up with our posts last week, you saw that we had a new pilot release. Yeah! yeah and jay is and incredibly excited about it absolutely and if you didn't see that we released a pilot where the fuck are we you released been? a pilot we released a pilot yeah, for, you for a new for you a new take podcast a more, take a more rude approach with the audience i hate you <laughs> um so we released the the pilot for singles club and it's been getting uh, a decent amount of traction um so look for that in the coming months. It's good. Uh, we, we're we currently working on creating episodes, but we oh, will not be posting until we have art assets ready for that. But with that said, that is enough shilling, and it's time for us to talk about nothing. Hey, hold on. <laughs> Alex. Hold on. Go to the yeah? Patreon. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go to the Patreon. Just go Alex, there. you've been fun. doing something recently. I'm doing it right now. I'm, I'm You're doing it right now? now? While we I'm record? transferring Pokemon right now because I can talk and do this at the same time because it's that mindless. I'm not looking at the DS. <laughs> what are you doing, Alex? I am transferring Pokemon from Pokemon Diamond to Pokemon White because I have been gathering a live decks. I talked about this on stream this Sunday, but the... Uh, mm-hmm. Since, like, 2017, I've been trying to catch every single Pokemon in the gen they're from. Because, like, getting a live dex if you use the modern games isn't that difficult, because they tend to keep them around, except not anymore, because now you can't catch them all. But, uh... The, uh... What does it mean to catch them all? It means to do a lot of mundane shit. Um... But yeah, I've the only Pokemon I'm missing in my deck so far, I'm up to Gen 5. I haven't caught all of Gen 5 yet. I have Gen 4 and everything below, except for fucking Mew and Celebi, which I have to play the virtual console versions of the Gen 1 games to get. Oh my god. Ugh. Because you get Celebi as a reward for beating the Elite Four and Crystal on the virtual console, and Mew, you can do you can still do the like glitch to get Mew in the virtual console version of like red and blue. How do you transfer from the virtual console to the modern games? They have interconnectivity with Pokemon Bank. The virtual uh, console that's, versions. That's that's weird. It's very weird. Okay. But yeah, I'm doing wow. I'm doing the mini game in order to bring Pokemon from my cartridge of Pokemon Diamond to my cartridge of Pokemon White, which is a uh, you just throw a sl- you do like a slingshot like dual screen mini game on the DS. And I have to do po- the Pokemon six at a time. And currently, I am on my second box of Gen two Pokemon. I can tell you what number I'm at right now. We can see where I'm at by the end because we can see how fast it is. I'm currently on Teddy. What's Teddy Ursa's evolution? Ursa Ring. Ursa Ring. I'm at Ursa Ring right now. So like, what is that number? It's a. I it's like two seventeen. I'm at like two seventeen in the Pokedex right now, and we'll see where we are by the end. Uh yeah. Yes. Update. All right. You're actually right. It is two seventeen. I can't believe you got that right. I am I'm so. Good. I'm so incredibly clueless about Pokemon that every time you guys talk at length about Pokemon, I'm just like, I like Eevee. That's 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 <laughs> cool. where I that's where I was at the start of me collect doing my live decks because the reason I started doing it is, is like I've never touched Pokemon. It wasn't a childhood thing for me, so I was like, why don't I just play through all the gens and experience all of them? So then I know huh. what I'm doing. So then I know what like the history of the series is about. Mm-hmm. And like playing, I started with Fire Red and Leaf Green, which are the the remakes of the first games in the the like engine of the third generation of games. So they look mm-hmm. tolerable. Yes. 
and it's not like two color schemes because it's not the fucking Game Boy. <laughs> and there's yeah. also some quality of life stuff. Um, but yeah, Pokemon is like, it seems very daunting, but after one generation, playing any game, like a single generation of it, you everything clicks by the end. Basically. Yeah, I've yeah. I've only I've played one Pokemon game. I had I believe X for the 3DS, um, because yeah. I, I had a 3DS and that was like my. I'm sorry, that was your first Pokemon game. It, yeah, sorry. Was, those, that, those ones are those ones are what I would refer to as Gen Four level, which is mediocre. Gen Four heads, fuck off. <laughs> Gen Four heads. I didn't realize what I was that that I was saying that <laughs> until I was doing it, but that's very. Do you think fun. they call themselves that? No. If anyone calls <laughs> themselves like ga- thing they're interested in heads, I don't think it's real. Like, yeah, ironically. I'm a cheese head, baby. <laughs> but that's like, the only one that I think is unironic. Three but, uh, 3DS was my first uh like actual personal console. Because I I really never played video games when I was a kid. Like it was always my dad or my brothers that played video games. Like my brother was huge. My brothers were big into like uh, Xbox, PS2, uh, PC. My little brother had a a Game Boy that he played to absolute death. Um, and I had mm-hmm. a Game Boy Color too. Um, but I didn't really play it because the only games that my mom got for me was like shitty product tie-in platformers Hell like yeah like like you know those you know those Shovel like wear, the olsen twins sweet 16 <laughs> driving game i got the Hell like yeah. the oh what were they called the the little fairy dolls that you would like slingshot and they would spin around twinks. in the air not twinks uh like in oh. that one vine where it goes into the yeah, fire yeah. It's called the, uh, uh, hold on. I, 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 uh, I believe there were Twinks branded toys that did the exact same thing. Yeah, but there's like a name they're, the for toy- yeah, they're like, they're like yeah. star twirlers or some shit, but like I had a plot. They're called like Flutterby fairies and what I see from 2013. Yeah, so, some shit like that. But like I had a platform of that on Game Boy and I was like, I don't like video games. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, before yeah. you continue I'm gonna recommend a video that we should watch after we record. Uh-huh. And if anyone who's listening, if you have any interest, um, there is a video by um, she doesn't go by this name now, but when she was going by this name, it was Tamashi uh, Hiroka. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She is a Pokemon YouTuber. Uh, she's branching out more now. But she did an entire video called Games for Girls where she went and talked a lot about those kinds of games and why they, like, where they fall in the past and where they're going mm-hmm. now. It's a very interesting retrospective on the exact kind of shitty game you're talking about. Yeah, because, like, like, I mean, I, I've never, like, that wasn't even, like, I, 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 the way I say I don't like video, I didn't like video games uh, that those types of games were the cause for me not to be a real big gamer. It's just, like, I've never really been big on playing video games myself, just the way I grew up. I just always watched my brothers or my dad play it, and then with the, you know, popularity of Let's Plays around my middle school age, like, that's just what I watched all the time, and I just never really felt the need to play video games myself unless it was with friends. So, like, so when I got a 3DS, like, that was the first time I played video games myself. Like, it was my first Pokemon. It was my first Animal Crossing. Um, Hell yeah. I think I, I had, I, like, I had Cooking Mama. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did the 3DS, did the 3DS, like, start to turn you into a gamer? It did, de- like, <laughs> Say it. was it your yeah, game? That was, gamer? yeah. It's like a lycanthropic transformation. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, jokes aside, I think it really did because, like, I it also yeah. like I think it ruined my eyesight. Not gonna lie, because I played 3ds so much, and that and around that time was when I had to get glasses for the first time. So it could that's probably a false. Yeah, I, I know, but uh, but that and then like at, 
I just like w- like Nintendo games are just very easy, fun games. Like you know, Animal Crossing is a life sim. Pokemon's a very easy game for literally anyone get- to get into. And then as I like moved over to PC gaming, because we because after like I think Xbox One, we really stopped buying consoles for the household. Mm-hmm. Um, like I I, I would, like found out about like Stardew Valley and like other like other easy fun games that like like people like like I, I've always been a person that I'm not really big into shooters like it's never been my style um I'm not into huge like like technical games or skill based games I just like having fun like I like playing Minecraft I like playing Stardew Valley I like playing shit like that where it's just it's just R- easy said it and best. fun the game is fun red yeah exactly Thank you, Reggie. If it's not fun, why bother? Exactly. And that's why I don't understand. May may I go on a rant for a moment? Please do. (laughs) That's why I don't fucking understand my little brother. He has been playing video games his entire life. And after Overwatch came out, he... Like, well, no, he... No, before Overwatch, he's been like this. But he's always been into shooters. Like... Call of Duty, uh-huh. uh, what's the other one? Uh, like, Counter-Strike. Battlefield? Um, not Battlefield, but, like, like Call of Duty and Counter-Strike, and then, like, Overwatch was when he really started getting into, like, gaming hardcore, um, and he's, like, even, you know, working towards being a pro gamer. He's, like, made consistent money off of it the past Sorry. couple of years. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's always been, like, he's always had, like, anger issues, uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. like, he gets so mad at the games, and I'm just like, why do you play video games? Like, why do you still play Overwatch if every single, like, every time he yells about it, I, it's always, this game sucks, you guys suck, get this, I hate you, like, it's just like, why do you put yourself through that? Like, why do people play games that make them so mad and put themselves through that every single day like every day my brother will be yelling at his overwatch game and one it's annoying as fuck and but i can probably i (laughs) go on Mm -hmm. well so i can tell you where the psychology goes into that Mm -hmm. at some point in a gamer's life (laughs) usually at a younger age, Mm -hmm. um, they stop associating the failings they make as their fault Mm -hmm. and start to make it the game's fault or the other player's fault. Yeah. Or, you know, that's not fair. Uh, You're playing an OP character. It all draws from a lack of accountability. Let's psychoanalyze and... my little brother. Well, I'm, I'm coming from. <laughs> no, the, I'm, I'm coming I'm, from. I'm joking. I'm coming from the 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 the, the exact same lane that little boy mm-hmm. is on. I don't know how young he is. He's he's um, fucking nineteen years old. He's six years old. <laughs> he may yeah, as so... fucking well be. I'm sorry, Michael. You're never gonna listen to this, but. <laughs> uh. You know, I'm gonna be honest. He sounds like me when I was six, getting mad at Super Smash Bros. 64. <laughs> He's um, always been but like this. The whole the whole issue kind of stems from a uh, putting too much importance on doing well in a video. Yeah, game. like I understand getting mad at it because, like, when he's actually you know in a tournament playing with a team. Cause like you know, be like like getting getting frustrated when like your team is failing or or you do something wrong or or you deem that the other team is is doing something bullshit. Like that's understandable because you're in a competition and there's actual money on the line. Um, but yeah. just casual gameplay when you know just just listening to him being like like you suck, your whole life sucks. I bet. I I bet everyone hates you. Like it's just it's just so awful. Hostile, violent. Yeah, it's it's in it's like incredible the shit that comes out of his mouth. It it doesn't help that 
uh, professional gaming role models are all like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for example, Mr. Tyler Ninja Blevins <sighs> is that person. I thought we were going to talk about he how Tyler hates women. Person. <laughs> we apologize what? for no. it. We should no. just put, take that clip of Tyler saying, I'm sorry, women, and put it right there. It was at the start of a podcast at one point. Yeah. I'm sorry, women. But, yeah, so, overall, my way of dealing with it and growing out of it, uh, personally, mm -hmm. uh, and this is advice for anyone who has these kinds of issues, even though I know you're probably not going to be accountable enough to listen, yeah. um, <laughs> is you gotta stop placing importance on that. Like, even if it's, like, you're a professional, you know, if you're doing this and you're just getting angry, you know, why are you doing this? It's yeah. like that Is one hockey fun? player says, "Is a game. Why you have to be mad?" Yeah, I didn't do it's it. Like, in are the you high having voice. fun doing this? If you're not having fun, get yeah, up. Get yeah, away what's from the fucking it. point? Making yourself angry turns your brain into a stew that makes it that's like hard to get out of. Mm, Once so you're in that mindset your body starts to, like, get stuck in it. And I know this because even nowadays, I still fall into that. I don't do it with video games anymore, but I still have these remnants of that part of me, and I hate it. Yeah. It, it, it like, it poisons my, like, pers like, the way that I understand the world around me and the way that I interact with it. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. Please get help if you have that kind of issue. I genuinely, I genuinely, like, think that it's a horrible thing and that you should see a like counselor about it. Yeah, like, like I, I've, I spent a long time, like, just you know, being in Let's Play, uh, f fans of Let's Players communities. Like, I spent a long time feeling like a quote unquote fake gamer. Just because I don't, I don't often go out of my way to play video games, and the video games that I do play are "quote unquote" casual games. So I, I was like, I'm, oh, I'm not really a fan of video games because I just watch them. Like, like I, I, it took me a long time to to actually be like, no, I am a fan of Half Life Two. I've just never played it myself. But it was a huge yep. part of my like half the Half Life series was a huge part of my childhood because I watched my dad and my brothers play it, and afterwards like it's it's like it's I'm a big fan of it. Like I, it took me a long time to be like, no, I am a fan of this. I've just never played it, and that's possible. The thing I don't understand the whole you're not a real gamer if you haven't done X and X and X because I want to tell you 100 percent majority of gamers are women in their 30s. Yeah. Mobile games are games and that makes them gamers. And I am not wrong. That is an that is a thing regard that is a thing that the industry itself acknowledges. Mm. This is People true. who say that you're not a real gamer are in fact a minority in terms of what actually counts as a real gamer. Because, like I said, a majority of people who play video games are women in their 30s playing mobile games. My mom is a more the as industry... much of a gamer as my brother is because she plays Candy Crush. Yes. That is absolutely true. Hell yeah. Because gaming is not gaming is not a job. It is not a thing that you are assigned. It is not like, oh, I'm a gamer, you know, like that's your sexuality or anything. <laughs> yeah. No. Gaming is a hobby. And everyone who plays games takes part in that hobby. If somebody starts drawing exactly. and they're like, they are an artist. If they draw like horribly or they don't do it very seriously and they just do it for fun. They're as much of an artist as anyone else. They're just not doing it professionally. I was just about to make the same exact uh, um, metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, cause like I like I don't monetize my art. I don't draw very often, both because of lack of motivation and also funny wrist pain. But I'm still as yeah. much as an artist as the commissioner who makes, you know, a thousand dollars a month off of their art. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I don't understand because gaming 
it's not unique to gaming this gatekeeping. Oh yeah. But it is more rampant in gaming than any other hobby, I'd like to think. I'd I'd say so. You don't see movie snobs, you know, have as strong an opinion on who is and isn't someone who enjoys movies. You know, you don't see artists who are shitty do that as much. Mm -hmm. It really is gamers. You guys... I think second to that is probably music music snobs, but anyway. uh, I was thinking about fucking uh, bad, like esports people you guys remember that overwatch dude that didn't know what condensation was yes xqc <laughs> yeah. yeah is it actually xqc yeah. i just named the only overwatch dude yes I knew. that guy's <laughs> no he and he really didn't he, he what he was like why is there fucking lick why is the outside of my water bottle wet and then chad to explain what fucking uh, condensation and the fucking water cycle was to this man oh my this god this is a human being bit. No, that man is genuinely horrible, and he got booted from Overwatch for being, like, horrible. Homophobic? Yeah. Incredible. He did get booted from the Overwatch League for being homophobic towards other players on other teams. Damn, he's not um, special. My little brother does that, too. <laughs> he gets banned from tournaments. No, but he's homophobic towards other players when he's mad. That's not good. Yeah. No. It's, it's, it very, it's very funny. When Fucking my fair. my little brother calls other players right. gay just because is, he's mad, and I'm the, like uh, sitting there like, "Hello." This is the equivalent of a teacher grabbing the note that you're passing to your students. Who fucking added me in my own server? Who did it? It was me. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did you do that? Um, you, 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 uh, I'm not gonna bring it up because I'm not gonna post yeah, the yeah, photo exa- in, yeah, in question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the context, but no passing notes. Don't <laughs> at me. Nope. Don't fucking... I added everyone. It's not just you. you You're not fucker. special. So, um... I think that's enough of that gamer conversation. <laughs> yeah. Got a little um, bit too if you like, I mean, I'm fine no, with yeah. conversations on this podcast getting real. I, I like the... Uh, God, imagine asking me this question when I was younger. I think I'd still have the same answer regarding the gamer mm. stuff. So I, I I think I've always had this opinion regarding gaming. Yeah. I always wanted my sister to get into gaming and shit. It was like I was always like very interested in getting other people into the hobby. The good my hobby. uh it's my it when is. my sister was younger than me. Well, she's always younger than me. She's three years younger. She's talking about her shitty Game Boy games. She uh, she wanted to get into <laughs> games because I got into games. So whenever I got like a new like handheld, like she also asked for one, but she didn't have much interest in the games i think it was just like the younger sibling wanted the thing and uh and and like i inherited all of her games when she was just like i'm done with the ds and the dsi yeah and like uh it's just all shovelware it was like an icarly game and like horses with a z (laughs) yes oh that's uh that's the pet series that's not shovelware may what does shovelware mean Oh, shovelware it is it is hardware that is so garbage it is like basically just shoveled out and it's done. Ah, okay. It implies like a very blase attitude towards the production of it and the very uh quick dumping of there it. Every time I hear shovelware, I think of shovel knight. Yeah. That is that God, is shovel horrible. that is shovelware technically. <laughs> but in a different sense. Yes. Also, but yeah, the um there were some good games in there. Like there was this weird like puzzle game where the whole point is it was like you had to turn the puzzle and then the pieces would fall and then you had to get them into like a specific exit. So it was kind of it was a weird but interesting puzzle game. And then also there was Cooking hmm. Mama, like the original DS. Fuck one. yes. Cooking Mama's good. Yeah, those were good games. Those were the good games in there that I found. My sister's friend had these po- these co- these cartridges of Pokemon, and that's why I have Pokemon White and Diamond. Is my my friend was like, or, or my sister's friend gave them to my sister, and my sister didn't want. He's like, you want Pokemon? I'm like, I guess, and I never played them. Oh, so that so that worked out really because I didn't need to buy them for this this Dex. I also have a copy. When I was uh, a kid. I have a Game Boy copy of I think leaf green i have like a green cartridge with no label sitting in my game case that's leaf green okay i didn't know if it was emerald or leaf not. green's the only game boy cartridge with that kind of label also or, uh, uh, packaging pokemon update 
Uh, I now have exactly 69 hours in this copy of Pokemon Diamond. Nice! Yeah! All right. Um, when I was a kid, I used to collect Game Boy games. Nice. Ooh. Like, I used to be a game collector. Oh, and I, I we got a real, real game in a lot of ways. Here. In a lot of ways, I still am a game collector, but, like, I don't have my collection with me. It's all with my dad. Mm. Uh, because... I don't know if it's if he if he if he insinuates that it's hit like he owns them or something, or if like he's just holding on to them. I never really asked that because I don't have the greatest relationship with my dad, and we're not getting into mm. that. Um, but um, I used to just get games to have games. Like I never played them. Scott the Wall. Like I had <laughs> I had Castlevania Two Simon's Quest on the Game Boy. You fool! Like classic. I. I I didn't buy it. It was given to me. But, like, I owned so many weird, shitty games that nobody wanted on the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance that, like, like, I didn't actually like them. But I liked the idea of owning them. That's a mood. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe that was just, like, me as a kid trying to uh, grapple with the fact that children don't have control over their lives. You reminded me... And that's uh, kind of why I stopped collecting so much. I collected pins as a kid. I have, I still have Ooh, my pin collection. What kind of pins? Like, literal, like, like, like spiky metal, like, enamel pins. Oh. That, like, my, oh yeah, my, yeah. I got a lot of them from my papa, who also collected them, mm. and I kind of picked it up from him. And over time, I've collected more and more, like, ones that are more, like, gaming-related and not so much about, like, m- like, bike, like motorcycle riding across the country which is what my grandparents did like to do as a hobby yeah and so like uh i have a lot of those and also you reminded me with the game boy talk about like the first game boy advance games i got because i got a game boy advance for my grandma to keep me occupied when we went on our annual summer camping trip and Mm. uh the first games i got were fucking shrek 2 and (laughs) the scooby 2 2 live action game Scooby Two, um, the live action movie. Oh my god, I was apparently really lucky. My first Game Boy game was uh, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. That's a pretty good one. It is. It was also. It was technically my first video game. Nice. Um, I don't attribute it as my first one, but it is the one that I probably had first. I just don't recognize it as my first video game because I don't remember much about my first time. What do you it. recognize as your first video game? Banjo Two. Nice. Not even. My, didn't I feel even like play my Banjo first real game. first. I'm, I didn't play it until I was oh, fifteen. I think my first real game was probably Luigi's Mansion because yeah. that was my first real console as well. I used to play like NES mm-hmm. games at like my grandparents' house because they had one, but uh, mm-hmm. they uh, that was an NES in like nineteen ninety eight, and then like I didn't know the Nintendo sixty four and the SNES existed until like. I found like sprite animations on new grounds. And I was like, why does Mario look like this? And I was like, oh, there was another one. Wow. You're, you are one of the funniest cases of a gamer I've ever heard because you know so much now. Yes. But like, you were an even dumber kid than I was. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I was like, huh, we have the Nintendo 64. Are there 63 other consoles for me to collect when I get older? My, uh, my, like... One time uh, I asked Santa Claus for a Nintendo 63. That's pretty sick. Did you, did you get <laughs> yeah. it? No. What the fuck, Santa? <laughs> I know. Cheapskate. But the, uh... The, uh... Da, 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 I'm trying to think of the words. Uh... I... I've completely lost my train of thought. Fuck. It was something well, about- awesome. Oh, the other game I had with my GameCube was a launch title. Was the Simpsons, uh, not Hit and Run, the good one. I had the Crazy Taxi one. Yeah, the Road Simpsons Rage. Road Rage. I had that one too. My dad was a big Simpsons head. <laughs> so he got me that. Is that where we're gonna end on the break? Or was that where oh, we're break? I remembered go my on break with with, you, I, with, oh? with the consoles. My grade school, uh, like friend, had a Nintendo sixty four, but we were both so young when he yeah. played it that I didn't know what it was. So he played like Paper Mario one and like Mario sixty four in front of me, 
And then I went to like Hollywood video to look for games and I asked for them thinking that they were GameCube games because I again didn't know the console differences. Oh. And also he kept they their household kept the games in like a cap like in an entertainment system with a cabinet with closed doors. So I didn't know what the console Ooh, looked yeah. like. I didn't even like I was like dumb enough as a kid, I was like, this controller is the same, even though it has three fucking prong. What? Because when I hung out when I when I hung out with that friend, I did the same thing Jay did, whereas like if I was a guest in a house, I would not touch the controller. I felt like I would I had like some weird child guilt and I was like, I I'm just gonna watch. Yeah. Children are stupid. Yes. And that's what we're going to yeah. break on. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>welcome back ah uh, that's, that's a surskit cry because we were talking about pokemon <laughs> pokemon cries are really we're dumb. still on the this an- shit. the anime pokemon cries are where it's at because they're well, just yeah, really because, are. because like in the early years they just said their names and they because in the games the the cries were fucking <laughs> Like that's what oh, my like. favorite ones are the super bit crush Pikachu cries from Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, yes. Because their volume, their, the way they worked is that they had you know they, what's, they only had you know two bits of volume information. You know what's on a, and you off. know what's a really good cry. Hold on, I gotta go look it up to see if I can emulate it. Don't look at my screen share right now. <laughs> fucking. All right, I'm closing my eyes. Hold on, Hold on I'm getting fuck. off my screen. It's not on it's my screen fucking, anymore. It's fucking uh, uh, Pokemon. Fucking what? Oh, I remember. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Fucking Gastrodon from Gen 4 goes. It <laughs> fucking makes us wet slap. Can you play that so I can hear it? Here, I'll um. Is this picking no, up just, my? Just play... oh, I, I'm okay. watching. Okay. I'm watching. Oh, okay. <laughs> we gotta put this in the podcast so people can hear it. Fucking. Okay. He goes, he goes, he goes. Oh my god. It makes fucking it's, wet noises at the end of its sucks. cry. The Pokemon devs shouldn't have been given access to wave files. Fucking love Pokemon cries. I love Cricketunes. Beep, beep. It goes up for some reason. Oh, there's a video I need, I'm going to show you later, but. Anyway, um, Pokemon cries are insane and I love them very you much. You know my favorite Pokemon cry is from Gen 1? What? Which one? My favorite Pokemon cry from Gen 1 has got to be um, Butterfree. Yeah. Or maybe not Butterfree. Is it like? Venonat? I think it's Venonat. It's it's one of those two. It's like a... Yeah, that one's good. <laughs> I love that um, Pokemon Sun and Moon still... like I don't know if they did this for Sword and Shield, but for Sun and Moon, Pokemon that are like from Gen 1 and 2 and stuff, like they still have their old-ass 8 bit like sounds for cries they didn't like update them and i hope that that stays for the rest of the series because i love going up to a cute little 3d snubble and it goes <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a it sounds like a pixelated sneeze <laughs> i know there yeah. there's one pokemon in the anime my throat doing these just... cries <laughs> there's one pokemon in the anime that just sounds like a dude yelling like full out and I, I it got shared around a while ago and I can't remember what it was but it just said like a dude yelling in pain like ah! I, 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 remember, I think it might have been exploded. I remember seeing the clip but yeah I don't remember the Pokemon in question but I, it was very funny because it just sounded like a stock scream from like Spongebob yeah, it just sounded like a man screaming it's my favorite <sighs> thing ever Pokemon's crazy huh it's like old Oh, yeah. It's like, it's almost like it's old or something. It's like it's been around for, like, decades. So many. Too long. Wh- when, did, when did the first Pokemon game come out? 1995. Huh. I think I that's as old as my brother. every Pokemon red and blue copy has Game Freak, 1995, plastered all over it. Ah. Interesting. Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny because the idea of these games was just one one boy hyper fixated on bugs and said i'm when he got older he's like i'm gonna make a game about catching bugs and then it became pokemon 
Yeah. I thought you meant when you said one boy hyperfixate on bugs, I thought you meant Ash Ketchum. No. <laughs> That's just the synopsis of Pokemon. It's like, this boy fucking loves bugs and rats, dude. Don't we all? Yeah. We're all gay here. Don't we? we yeah, we don't like we all? That that reminds me um, of one of my favorite things about um, queer and neurodivergent spaces, uh, especially on the internet, is how much we fucking love bugs and weird animals. I yeah. don't like bugs. I like cartoon <laughs> and fictitious bugs. A real bug die. Well, you're you suck. But like, I'll I will see. Like the other day, I I took my dog in from a walk and like on the frame of the door to go into my house there was this big ass spider i was like oh, spider and i put my dog inside and then i quickly took a picture and sent to uh one of my group chats and everyone went oh my god it's a fuzzy boy and like one person was like that's an orb weaver and then i just i started uh googling pictures of orb weaver spiders and sent them to the to the chat and everyone was like look at that cool spider and it's just like it for, like, a lot of people, like, I'll, I'll show, like, a picture of that same spider to my mom, and she'll be like, ew, gross. But, like, with all, with, with the, uh, a lot of, like, uh, queer neurodivergent people, like, they're all just like, yeah, cool spider! I'm like that with rats, though. I'm rats down with, good. I'm down with rats. Whoa, plague be upon me. <laughs> I can absolutely get down with the sickness. <laughs> my thing my thing about bugs and spiders and that kind of thing is that they're very scary to me. Yeah. I've I've always been scared of them and a lot of that might be because of um it's not cool growing up in a dirty house and there's oh, bugs yeah. in it. So that probably fucked with me growing up. And That's then spiders were just always scary to me. But um, it's their. I speed. try to be. I hate it. I try not to be scared of them. I do my very damnedest. Like, uh, I respect them enough not to kill them. I will do everything in my power to catch them and get them out of like my house or my space. Yeah. I do not like killing bugs. I feel genuinely bad about doing my them. uh yeah, my fe my fear to. turns into white hot rage, and I will kill any bug that steps foot in this room. <laughs> I have no. I mercy. remember. <laughs> I remember it was it was Thanksgiving a couple of years ago and there was a cockroach in my grandma's house um like on the ceiling and I like heard I heard a commotion coming from the other room and I was like okay what is it I walk in there and there's a cockroach on the ceiling and like everyone's gathered in there like all my cousins and uncles and aunts and I'm and like I'm the only one that goes okay get me a cup and a piece of paper and then I took it and put it outside, and everyone was like, thank you, Jay! And I was like, literally, it was not difficult. I don't know what your problem is. I was oh, like, I, way, I'm I sorry, my, I'm sorry, my cool, my cool, uh, masculine uncles couldn't do, couldn't fucking deal with a cockroach. I figured out which Pokemon it was probably I was trying to emulate mm -hmm. in my brain. Yeah. What? And it was Metapod. That's a Hell good yeah. one. Yeah. More like Meta God. That's Metapod's cry. That's what I was doing. You know what I found? More like um, Meta God. You know what I found right? in Pokemon Black and White? Hmm. The instant what? I got past Endgame, or I got to Endgame, where like you beat the Elite Four and you can go to like the other half of the continent, and like uh, yeah. the first bridge you cross, there's a dude that's like, I'm going to sell you a magical Pokemon. Would you accept this Magikarp for like $1,000? And it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> They, you immediately yeah. get out there, and then they're just scamming children. Well, yeah. <laughs> Buy this fish. It's a tourist. It's a tourist location you're at. Buy this fish. It's just like real life. Tourism is a great place to scam people, because you're not going to see these people. I was again. just thinking about that meme picture where it's like, eat the brown part of this banana, but it's buy this fish, and he's holding Magikarp like that picture of the rat. Just gripping it with one <laughs> hand. <laughs> Uh, I do. I do banana. like to imagine the Magikarp salesman in black and white is just holding Magikarp by the bottom of his tail. I Aww. I assume he's gripping him like a like how you would like hold like a CD. 
like a CD-ROM, like you Magic hold it by the outside. Magic carps don't need water to breathe, <laughs> presumably, because they can just survive on land. They just flip, inexplicably. They just flip Yeah, but I don't think they like it. They just they they the whole there's a whole there's a whole mobile game about it called Magic Carp Jump. They jump really high. Yeah, but do you think it likes it? Have you asked the Magic Carp? Yeah, did you ask? And the they Magic do it as Carp? an activity. If you if you know the canon of of Pokemon uh, Stadium, for instance. Pokemon Stadium has the Magikarp jumping mini game, and they do it by themselves for no reason. Okay, I'll let this slide for now. Okay, you guys think I'm glad about... that I can pull my knowledge about Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> you guys think about how the Pokemon Coliseum games uh, on the GameCube, uh, they're, the villains act like Final Fantasy bad guys, and they're called shit like NASCOR. <laughs> and, He's gonna drive and, a car. And Sosh. There was a trainer Sosh. in that game called Sosh. Sa- <laughs> Sosh. 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 <laughs> and I'm gonna Sosh. Uh, that sounded like fucking Boggy. Yeah, the polar bear. Boggy? Yeah, from, what? From, from, from the polar Banjo bear from Banjo Kazooie. Bog. 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 Sosh. Sosh. Anyway. Um. <laughs> God. Earlier. Oh. Earlier, y'all mentioned um, collecting shit, and I, like, Alex said he used to collect pens, but do you guys currently or used to collect anything of interest or just in general? I think, uh, uh, I, I used think to the collect family Game cor- Informer magazines. I think the, um, mm. besides my current obsession with collecting all the Pokemon, uh, the, uh, I think my family still has like the family quarter collection somewhere, unless my dad Ooh. has it. Class. I do have a small coin. collection of foreign coins. Um, I have a. But... I have. I got some Japanese stamps that came Ooh. with my. Uh, I bought like the Japanese exclusive like Club Nintendo Animal Crossing playing cards, and there's yeah. there's like three there's like two little tiny like pocket size ones, and then there's a full deck. And they're based on, like, yeah. the GameCube. Like, the tiny decks were, like, from the New Leaf era, and the big deck was from, like, the GameCube era. And they were straight, mm-hmm. they were imports, so I got, like, some Japanese stamps in the packaging as well. Oh. I got some Chinese stamps in my coin collection. Nice. Yeah. I think we should make a big scrapbook. Uh, that'd be fun. Um, But I... To, to go back to my Game Informer collection... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I... Don't have it anymore, unfortunately. Oh. oh, that sucks. Yeah, it it was something that I really couldn't keep in the move after I left my mom's home. Mm-hmm. But when I was like 10, my goal was to collect every issue of Game Informer, and at the time there were only 200. Mm-hmm. Um, they are no longer at just 200, and I'm glad I didn't get invested in that because that does not sound like something I could afford. <laughs> Game Informer magazines are cheap. They're nice magazines. I would love to own one or two, just like, you know, because they have an interesting look on game news. Mm-hmm. And they're where I got my opinion of any game is okay for a gamer to like and enjoy. Like, Angry Birds was, like, one of their editors, like, top ten games of the year. Hell yeah. when some, like, they have a section where it's, like, um they answer reader letters and that kind of thing. I guess it's emails nowadays. Mm -hmm. But they got an email that was like, you know, you should hire some, like, real gamers, you know, not these women who put Angry Birds as their favorite games. And the editor-in-chief, who I respect the hell out of uh, for his, like, thoughts on this kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. he's like, hey, um... Huff my nuts. last, last, Last I heard, Angry Birds was a game. It is a mobile game, and it is one of the biggest, most top like downloaded games on the app store more sales than most popular games that we talk about on this like magazine Mm -hmm. fuck off you sexist piece of shit i I remember playing angry birds on my fucking kindle in middle school uh i lost that kindle and i'm still mad about it really yeah, I I lost it. It like I'm pretty sure at school, and it was never found. And I'm pretty sure someone stole it because I left it in my desk accidentally. Yikes! But I, I, I like 
when I was younger, I never really collected anything. I've always just kind of been a general hoarder of ob- of miscellaneous objects. <laughs> um, but I've never really properly been like, oh, I'm I collect rocks or I collect this or that. But recently, um, uh, I've gotten really into collecting CDs. Uh, yeah. at least of j- just like not like any particular like like just any cd or anything it's just of like my favorite bands and albums um yeah and i never really i like I, i've always like it and liked physical media more than digital media just because it's nice mm-hmm. to have something tangible like every time i get a video game i like if i can for a console i like to have it physically like I could care yeah. less about CD games, but like I, I have all the Switch games I own. I own them physically I just because I, I, I like to have that. I have the a only fucking problem vinyl with collection. That they don't have almost none of the Switch games that are out are on physical. Yeah, I don't know. Which I don't know why that came up with with collections, but you reminded me with your CDs. Is I have started a vinyl collection. I have yeah like, specifically I, a gaming vinyl. collection? No, because I have Spirit Foam. Oh, that's yeah, right. I have spirit. Like that, that's the like... only one that's not game related, though. I have Mother Two's. Like I have Earthbound soundtrack on vinyl. I have uh, banjo. I have the entirety of Banjo Kazooie on like the entire like four, four vinyl set. I pre-ordered that Undertale like tenth anniversary, not tenth anniversary, like fifth anniversary set. Um, mm-hmm. and it is uh, it's pre-ordered. It hasn't been. It's not produced yet, but I bought that shit immediately because it looked so good. Um, I have Spirit yeah. Phone, and I have the Hollow Knight soundtrack. Ooh, mm. yeah. And the DLC vinyl. That's two separate sets. Four discs total. Uh-huh. Actually, it might be I three. collect vintage computer games. That's Ooh. good. I have a bunch of old, like, PC-98 discs of stuff like Hexen. Uh, I think I have a Duke Nukem game in there. Oh. A lot of it is crap, because thrift stores are, like... A good source of a bunch of random stuff, but not a lot of good stuff. But like mm-hmm. I said, Hexen is in there, which is one of my classic Doom like games because it was it was made by the Doom Company, but it was a fantasy uh hack and slash as opposed to a shooter. Mm. Um and all that kind of stuff. I would love one day to have a like old like PC like ninety eight or like Windows uh XP machine. Just yes. so I can run those games on like a modern, like I say modern, run those games on an, on a machine that it was intended for. Mm-hmm. Because they don't run very well on modern computers because they have to like forcibly change your computer's uh, aspect ratio instead you can get of a virtual machine. To it. I could, but that's more it's work than not I understand how to do. It's just an emulator. No, I mean it. It would be the. It would be the same. I just don't understand how virtual machines work. It's just like an <laughs> emulator. But also being able to turn on an old ass computer tower and hear it go like, yes, and we're up and like you know you turn well, on the yeah. monitor and you hear the click of the switch well, well, as like the that's fade the, in goes on that CRT. That's the that's the dream. But like if you have to run it on a new thing, a virtual machine is where. It's oh, I at. don't play them. Oh, okay. Hey, well, I don't then, play don't them on my modern work. system. It's too much work on my modern system. That's what I was saying. If you were going to do it on a modern system, the virtual machine fixes oh. the problem. Is what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now I can play fifty-one chess classics on Hell my computer. Hell yeah! Hell yes! You know what kind of came and went, but I'm glad that I bought the fifty-one what? games collection. Yes. Because you brought up chess. Yeah, that game was wor- I one hundred percented that game. Yeah, that game was great fun. And it's, it was good it's, to 100% it's, it. it's one of those games that you like, like for me, like it was like, it's one of those games where it's like, it was, it was worth the money, but I'll probably not play it very often, but it was worth the experience and playing yeah, those games. I got my, I got my fill out of it. Yes. It was definitely worth it. Do you know, and plus what I can game always do go you back. think gave you the hardest, hardest time getting all of it for? I did. I still haven't like fully beaten that game. Cause a lot of the stuff is like. I just got bored and I didn't care about like hundred percenting it. So like a lot okay. of it's still unbeaten. Um, six puzzle, the hardest difficulty of six ball puzzle six ball. hurts me physically because yeah. the AI just k- wins. It just wins because I stumbled it doesn't into have winning a, that one. The AI doesn't have I did on accident. 
hesitation. It just knows what it needs to do to win, and you need to just yeah. get lucky to make the make a pattern faster than they can. The reason why I managed to beat it was because it was my bedtime ritual for like a month. Yeah. When I went to bed, I would play an hour of 51 classic games. I would beat like a game or two. Also, fuck Spider Solitaire. Spider Solitaire is easy. I fucking hate Spider Solitaire. I I had very little trouble with Spider Solitaire. I hate Spider Solitaire. I had a lot more trouble with regular Solitaire. I have no idea how that's possible. Spider Solitaire sucks. Solitaire is hard. Normal solitaire is for babies. No, it's not. Is spider solitaire is the baby one. The hardest not, difficult, the, the, the hardest difficulty one. I don't remember. The it's hardest, been months. Oh fucking! The hardest difficulty on. I maybe I have to go back. Maybe I I do have them mixed up. But I remember one of them kicking my ass so hard that I was like, "Fuck this!" On the hardest difficulty. Spider Solitaire I didn't have any trouble with because I played Spider Solitaire growing up in elementary school. I, Spider I Solitaire is easier it. than regular Solitaire. Yeah. I might have gotten I the mix them up then. I could never play regular Solitaire. I'll have to go look. Because Spider Solitaire is the one where you have to, where you have like the columns. And regular Solitaire yeah. is the one where you have, uh, where you have to put them like in the suits. And like you, you start putting them in the little squares from Ace. Three card Klondike Solidaire was a pain in the ass. That's what it was. That's the one where you have three decks of cards, right? No. There's one that has like mul- there's one type of solitaire in there no, no. where you three have more you three... have more than just the four suits. You have like three copies of the four suits. Or like two no. copies of the four suits. That's a thing. That's in one of those. No, 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 no. Um so what you're thinking of, so Spider Solitaire has three difficulties. It has easy, which is all of them are the same suit. Yes. Medium, which is there's two suits. There's the black yeah. suit and white suit yes. and red suit. And there's 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 That's the correct. hard mode, which is all that... four suits are mixed in, but it's still one deck of cards. You're correct, and also that's the one I had trouble with. I could never really? I could never do it. No, I tried that shit for hours. My difficulty uh, the thing I had the hardest time with was three card Klondike Solidaire, because that one is the hardest one to actually get into a winning condition with. Sometimes you just get soft locked and you just have to restart. Whereas with Spider Solitaire, you can like you can grind at it and start fucking around with undoing actions to the point where you get it right. You know what's uh you know what's a good a very good game in that? Hmm. Uh fucking I think it's called Mahjong Solitaire, the one where you're just matching. That one is very relaxing and fun. Mahjong Solitaire? Yeah, yes. that one is very fun. And that was just some fun, chill time. You know what game I had a lot of fun with? What? Shogi. I still haven't touched Shogi because it scares me and I'm like... Really? Shogi's just... It's just... It's just, just, it's just, with a it's few just two. I know, but I just haven't... It's I not just, that much like, more complex. I got, bored with, I got bored with 51 games before I got to Shogi. I was like, I'll do that you later. You tried Shogi. I, did, I was like, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. And then like 15 video games came out and I got, it got buried. Because there's... Because not only is there regular shogi, there's mini shogi, which is a yeah. challenge mode of yeah. shogi. Oh, I know. I watched Vin- I've i watched fun. Vincent Vinesauce struggle with shogi for hours. If we <laughs> if, if if ever a reason to get into 51 games again, I want to play shogi with you. That would be fun. Shogi. Yeah. Shogi is just the a channel fun as like little a word. Shogi is a fun little it's word. It's just like a mini episode. It's just Alex and I play shogi. Hell yeah. Oh, anyway. also while we're here talking about uh stuff for the channel, uh definitely yeah. want to play next Sunday for the stream. I'm going to definitely uh set up Wind Waker randomizer to play on my Wii U and play it on console. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's gonna be so fun. I need to find a place to Did put the my... checklist, like the tracker, I need to find a place to put it on the UI we have. I probably oh, I need um, to put like I could like I'll co- just make a new UI. You could could replace like my little yeah. avatar face in the corner. Yeah, no, that's not hard. Um, just you need to give me like a a idea of what goes where. Mm-hmm. Um, but with that being said, I think when I stream, I'll probably just, I'll just stream on whatever days I end up having off in a week. So I'm not gonna have a regular schedule. I'm just gonna stream on a day in a week. Hmm. Um, I think I'm gonna start streaming my speed runs of Momodora Four. That would be fun. Because that game is a fun speed game because of Metroidvania. Yeah. Um, and its movement is interesting because 
Um, as all Metroidvania speedruns are, they take advantage of bad programming. Nice. What's that? If you press the roll and the jump button at the same time, you do something that's not supposed to be possible within the game's code? Uh-oh. Yeah. Because yeah. you just jump and roll. Nice. Well, you're not supposed to be able to jump while you're rolling. Because uh, having an intangible jump is uh, busted. Uh, it's entirely something that the game was not prepared to handle. Mm-hmm. Um, but also... The speedrun is an all bosses speedrun. Nice. Where you have to fight them without getting hit. Oh. Every speedrun is a no hit all bosses. Because the bosses in that game give you items, right? If you beat them without killing, they give or you a special item if you get, if you beat them without getting hit. Technically, you're not also you're you're not able to heal if you co- go in with damage already either. Oh my god. You, the idea it's it's a no hit boss speedrun, but. Like, rules-wise, it is your health cannot change while you are fighting the boss. I like speed... I, I like this plane flying over my house. But, um... The, uh... I don't even know if that can be picked up. But it is loud. I'm hearing it over I my head... Yeah, I can hear it over my fucking headphones. It's obnoxious. But, um... So... The, uh... That's what I like about speedruns of, like, uh... Dark Souls 1. Is, like, it's not a no-hit speedrun, like, exactly... But you spec so much into being a glass cannon that if a boss late game hits you, it's instant death because you're running around naked yeah. and you've never put stats into your health. So like you're just running mm-hmm. around for your scared for your life, like please God. <laughs> so the reason why the every speedrun of Momodora 4 is a no hit speedrun is because every category is based off of the hardest category, which is insane difficulty. Oh my god. And insane difficulty in Momodora 4 is if you get hit once, you die. <laughs> Anywhere. Um, but uh, you're allowed to get hit outside of bosses in other categories, because that's only, you know, fair. Yeah. It's all it'd, be qu- it'd be quite the fucking wall and to gatekeep. Yeah. It's a hard speedrun already because you have to memorize, like, movement and where you're going. And if you go in the wrong room, you could lose uh, quite a bit of time. Mm-hmm. If you get lost, you're fucked. I tried to... Sp- I, did a, I did a practice run uh, just while I was, like, after I left call last night. Mm-hmm. Um, there are, like, I think seven major segments of the game. I got three segments in, and I was already 40 minutes past the the typical run time. Jesus. <laughs> the 20-minute run. The only game I've ever wanted to speedrun, I don't think I've talked about this on the channel before, but the two games I've wanted to speedrun were uh, Chibi Robo, the original for the GameCube, and Chulip. Yes. Yeah, the funny PS2 game where you smooch. Chulip yes. would be fun to try to play through really fast, like if you have a route, but doing a successful yeah. speedrun in that game is so RNG heavy that it, like, it's so many of the smooches you have to do to get 100%. Because I think, I don't know if 100% is necessary exactly. I think there is a point. There's many run. percent runs, aren't there? I think. I remember there being, like, not almost non-existent community for that game. Like, people did it as a goof, basically. It sounds like a hell game. It's very... Like the RNG isn't that bad if you're not trying to go fast. Like the like you just like you see something and it's like, well, I can't do that today. I'll go do something else. When you're ar- when you're trying oh. to speed run, you're like, <laughs> I have to keep going back to bed and skipping twenty four oh hours and then testing the RNG again because that's how you make a loading hey, time because it's scheduled like. Majority. Guess what I found? What did you find? Any percent speed run for Tulip, uh, with glitches is an hour and 30 minutes that's not bad Ooh. that's not bad without glitches that's not without two gl- hours and 18 minutes that's that's not bad what about 100 percent? they're 100 percent. all kisses yes four hours and 15 minutes that's not wow. bad considering like the game took me 20 hours to be any percent yeah but like that's a pretty big do you difference. so like one of the smooches in that game is a dude that's like a puzzle piece he's got like puzzle piece head and he's in a factory. To get to him in that factory, you have to go through like a stealth section, sit through a cutscene, take a train that requires you to know a specific code. This train is a loading screen cutscene. You get off that train. You wait for this dude to appear. He only appears for an hour every 
in a in a 24 hour cycle and if you miss it you have to go back to your house or to sleep or wait for the 24 hours to pass at the yeah. factory otherwise you have to like take two cutscene trains back to your house sleep wait and go back for that puzzle piece man and the way you smooch yeah. him is he pops up out of the ground and he sprinkles a bunch of little fucking puzzle pieces around and you have to look at them on the ground I think they might actually look the same on the ground until they're in your inventory and you have to find the exact one that matches, which is RNG. And if you don't find the uh, right one in time, he goes back underground and you have to repeat that process. Hey, Alex. Uh-huh. If you speed ran Tulip, what category would you do? Would you do all kisses? I would do, do all do kisses kiss because that sounds grueling. Hey, guess <laughs> what? Hmm. All kisses run allows you to do glitches. I'm not gonna do glitches. That's I'm I'm you, not. You, I'm not. There are two glitches that are important. Which oh, give me them. Tell me them. Tell me the facts. So according to the Chulip, uh, this is gonna be the last thing we talk about. Yes. According mm -hmm. to the Chulip Speedrun dot com category rules for any uh for any percent, uh, glitchless is that you're not allowed to do kiss buffering and you're not allowed to do zombie mode. I have no idea. Zombie mode is a you 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 are at no health but you continue to play so you're fine you're basically yeah. invincible. Oh, that's fun. And kiss buffering is something that allows you to do kisses without um a without like a lot of the fucking around that kisses end up doing. I think. Oh. Uh... Those are two things that are probably important to the all kisses speed run. Yes. To the point where because there's there a lot no, of there's um, no glitchless there are, all kisses. There are there are speed runs. There like. There are kisses in that game which are guy pops out of the ground, he walks around and stomps around angry, and then there's a chance that yeah. he becomes he stops being angry. Like you don't have to do anything, yeah. you just have to hope. And that kiss buffering yeah. probably allows you to pass through that and not have to wait. Hey Hey Alex. Yes. The all kisses run that's uh for emulators is it doesn't have any runs. You could get world record yeah. first try. Why do you think I started routing it? I didn't have competition. <laughs> But the all right. Um, but well, the uh, also uh, also for the I also tried routing all stickers, which are like the achieve achievable like all events basically in Chibi Robo, and that game yeah. is not RNG heavy. I just got lazy and didn't want to do it anymore because I tried routing ah. it on stream and just was playing through Chibi Robo, and I was like, this is boring, and I turned it off. Also, is the finale here? Let's see. 397, 98, 99, 400, 401, 402, 403. I got to, I went from Ursaring, which is 217, to 400 something in the Pokedex. Woo. Wow. While we Everyone were there. give a hand to Alex. I still have Do you have so any many. final words to say to us before we end the recording? Don't play Gen 4 unless they make a remake. All right. Bye.